Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss two examples. We will have power series and we are going to find their radius of convergence. So let us note down the given power series. We have, so our power series is summation n running from 0 to infinity, n cube by 3 raised to n, x raised to n. So let me write a standard form of power series, summation cn x raised to n. Getting So this is standard form of power series where cn is called coefficient or a multiple of x raised to n. So what is cn here? cn, okay, so which is multiple of x raised to n, it is n cube by 3 raised to n. So this is our cn and with the help of that we have to find radius of convergence. The radius of convergence has formula r is equal to 1 by alpha, where alpha is a constant which can be calculated in this way, alpha is equal to limit n tends to infinity mod c n plus 1 upon c n. Okay, so this is formula of alpha and reciprocal of alpha is nothing but radius of convergence, right? See there is one more formula for alpha, but see for this problem I am going to use this formula. See here c n we have, value of c n we have, c n plus 1 we have to find, let us find c n plus 1. It can be easily obtained just by replacing n by n plus 1, okay, everywhere. So 3 raised to n plus 1. So then I am using this formula of alpha, what we have limit n tends to infinity mod c n plus 1 upon c n. Let us put the values limit n tends to infinity or uh, c n plus 1 is this one n plus 1 cube divided by 3 raised to n plus 1 whole divided by c n is this one n cube divided by 3 raised to n. See there is no need of mod since all numbers are natural numbers getting we are taking cubes and 3 raised to some positive power so obviously all terms will be positive no need to apply mod okay so let us go further so let us use this space to solve the remaining part of this problem okay so let me write here this is equal to limit n tends to infinity c uh, n plus 1 cube divided by 3 raised to n plus 1 right but see we have this in denominator I'm going to multiply. Actually, we have a division, but I'm multiplying. So that's why I need to interchange numerator denominators. 3 raised to n upon what we have n cube. So this is equal to limit n tends to infinity. See, this bracket has power 3. n has also same power. So let me write a common power and n plus 1 divided by n into. So 3 raised to n is remaining. And this 3 raised to n plus 1, that 3 raised to n plus 1 can be expressed as 3 raised to n into 3. See, 3 raised to n and 3 raised to n, we can easily cancel. So just 1 by 3 is there, so we can take it outside since it is independent on n. So limit n tends to infinity, we can divide separately n upon n, 1 plus 1 by n raised to 3 which is equal to 1 by 3. I am applying the limit now 1 as it is plus if I apply limit here we know that 1 by infinity is 0. 0. So what is value of uh, alpha? 1 by 3. See this is not our radius of convergence this is value of alpha and the radius of convergence is reciprocal of it. Then radius of convergence Generally, we denote by capital R or smaller sometimes. So, 1 by alpha. Alpha is 1 by 3. So, that 3 is in denominator of denominator. It will go to the numerator and we will have the answer 3. So, this is radius of convergence of a given power series. Okay. Make a screenshot of it. Then we will go for the next example. So, this is second example we have. Right. So, this is a power series and we have to find its radius of convergence. Okay. So, let us compare this power series with a standard form. So let me write a standard form here. Summation c n x raised to n. So will you tell me what is uh, c n? c n is multiple of x raised to n. So the entire bracket is our c n. So let me mention here, here c 
cn is equal to n cube minus 5n square plus 7n minus 2. So, this is our cn, right? Uh, see, we have to find radius of convergence. I am using the same formula which we used for the last example. R is equal to 1 by alpha, alpha is limit n tends to infinity mod c n plus 1 upon c n. So, c n already we have, we want c n plus 1. So, let us find c n plus 1 first, then we will find the value of alpha, okay. c n plus 1. So, it can be easily obtained just by replacing n by n plus 1 somewhere. n plus 1 cube, right? Minus 5 n plus 1 square plus 7 n plus 1 minus 2. So, this is our c n plus 1. So, let us use the formula of alpha. Then alpha is equal to limit n tends to infinity mod c n plus 1 upon c n. So, this is equal to limit n tends to infinity. I am putting the value of c n plus 1 first, okay, at numerator. So, n plus 1 cube minus 5, n plus 1 square plus 7, n plus 1 minus 2 divided by c n. c n is n cube minus 5 n square plus 7 n minus 2, right. So, this is, uh, yes, by putting values, I got this one. See, now what will I do to find the value of this limit? You can easily see the highest power of n is 3. So, that's why I'm going to divide numerator and denominator by n cube. See, this is equal to limit n tends to infinity. I am dividing the entire numerator by n cube. I am dividing the entire denominator by n cube. But we know that if we have plus or minus sign, we can separately divide. So, here also I am going to divide separately. So, mod n plus 1 cube by n cube, get it? Minus 5. See, square is there. I, let me expand. n square plus 2n plus 1. So, you are familiar with uh, that formula a plus b bracket square formula. With the help of that formula, I expand that bracket plus 7 n plus 1 by n cube minus 2 by n cube. So, let us talk about denominator, okay. In denominator also, I am going to divide each term by n cube separately, okay. So, by dividing it, the task will be very easy for us, okay, to find the value of limit. Okay, so let us continue, but see, we want some more space to write. So let me remove this part. So now we are getting this space to solve the remaining part of this problem. So this is equal to, this is equal to limit n tends to infinity mod. See here, the uh, both of them have the same power cube. So let me write a common power cube. And if I divide separately n upon n1, plus 1 by n. Okay, I have written the common power cube and I divide it separately. Here also I will divide separately. So, minus 5. If I divide separately n square upon n cube 1 by n. So, see I am dividing separately as well as I am cancelling uh, the common part. Okay, and that's why I am getting n square upon n cube that means 1 by n plus 2 by n square plus 1 by n cube. Okay. Okay, so what about this? Here also I will divide separately, say 1, uh, n by n cube, that means 1 by n square plus 1 by n cube, 1 by n cube. And here minus 2 by n cube as it is. Okay, so the numerator is over. Now we have to talk about denominator. I am dividing n cube, n cube will get cancelled, 1 minus, here n square will get cancelled, so 5 by n. Here, n, n will get cancelled. So, 7 by n square and here minus 2 by n cube. So, let us apply the limit. So, when we apply the limit, when we apply the limit, what will happen that n will be in denominator, no? So, its value will be 1 by infinity, which is 0. So, this is, if I put infinity here, 1 by infinity is 0. So, just 1 is left there, cube minus 5. See, all terms will be 0 by applying limit. 7 here also 0. If I put infinity here, 1 upon infinity is 0, so minus 0 divided by 1. Same thing will happen here. If you have n or any higher power of n in denominator, by applying limit, its value will be 0. So just answer is 1. See, this is value of alpha. 
we want radius of convergence then radius of convergence i am denoting by capital r which is reciprocal of alpha our alpha is 1 so the radius of convergence is also 1 so in this way we completed this example make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you